Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Is Coffee Your Club with Your Cook Chef. How are you all today? We are here ready to enjoy an evening with you one more time. Okay, I know it's a little bit late, but here we are ready for a cup of coffee like always, right? So today we are going to talk a little bit about um, some of our pros and some techniques we can use to prepare different coffee brews or I say coffee drinks actually because we are getting into different kind of creamers in a way okay so for that let's start with our main product for the day here it is that will be this beauty here well what is this this is Vevox Chef coffee grinder okay manual coffee grinder this is one of our main products why are you asking yourself that well because as you know a Vevox chef who specialize in grinders that means either spice grinders or coffee grinders but we are lately getting a little bit too much in, too much no a lot into coffee all right so what is the secret why is this coffee grinder so important for us well there are different factors and to begin with it's just its size okay you can see it here, this is the size it has, it is basically the size of a phone, okay, it's no bigger than that. It's actually pretty light, it's not very heavy, it has a sturdy jar, you can see the jar is here. This is 100% glass, okay, we are not talking about plastic, we are not talking about other materials, not even metal or wood that can get other kind of problems it's just glass you can clean it you can wash it you can do anything with it and then we have the body of the grinder in the body of the grinder we have certain parts that we can see all the time you will realize that we have the handle okay and the little knob at the end now there is something interesting about this and is that this grinder has this handle that is in one single piece okay why is that important well because this handle is handle, knob, and lid, okay? This is so interesting because many times when people are trying to grind something and you use handle for it, you will realize that you tend to pressure down to the side that doesn't have, of course, the, in this case, the grinder. You will just press into the other side. And it's important that nothing flies away. So if we are making a lot of pressure here, it won't come out and just fly or break or anything, okay? It's almost impossible to break, to be honest. And we have tried this many, many times, many ways. Now, there is a thing of the handle, okay? As you can see, it can move independently. This is very nice because in, when you are moving, you don't have to move your hand with the grinder. You can just make it go around and the handle itself will also move independently so there won't be any extra effort you see my hand is always in the same position otherwise i will be going like this so this is an interesting thing we have the handle you can see it's a very sturdy piece of um oh the stainless is still sorry i was like lost in a minute in a second uh, we have stainless steel, okay, you can see the rod is pretty sturdy, it's very strong and then also made of stainless steel is the lid, okay, the lid fits perfectly into the hopper of the grinder, you see, it cannot fit any way, okay, it cannot just go over whatsoever, it has a way to just fit it and then it's perfectly. Now, then we have the body of the grinder, as I was showing you just now we have the hopper here the hopper can hold up to 20 grams of coffee beans okay of course different kind of coffee will have maybe a little different but usually it's up to 20 grams of coffee uh, of coffee beans and one very very interesting part I've been using this just now so it's a little bit dirty let's clean a little bit why not Clean, light, or light to be. As you can see there, this is the grinder itself, okay? This here is the grinder itself. Those blades that you cannot see, of course, because they are inside, 
those blades are made of 100% stainless steel. So they're extremely resistant. They won't just lose their sharpness over time. Okay, they are very good to maintain uh, for maintaining the oils and the flavors and the smells of the coffee. Okay, so these are just amazing. They will last a very long time. And there's one last detail with these grinders. One very interesting one because you might be thinking, oh, but if I want to prepare, I don't know, I want to prepare espresso coffee or I want to prepare some pour over or French press or just cold brew, all with the same grinder. Because I know a lot of people just have these electric old grinders and they just have very fine results that are not very useful. Well, in this case, we have this grinder that can be used for any kind of coffee preparation, okay? How is that? Well, that is with this. We have here a ring that can be moved from left to right from number one, number two, three, four, five, and six, okay? We can go over all the numbers and those numbers imply how big are going to be the resulting pieces of coffee. So it will imply the coarseness, okay? How coarse or how fine. Number one being the finest result and number six being the coarser result. Okay, so what are we going to prepare today? You may be asking yourself. Well, today we are going to prepare some pour over, okay? So pour over coffee is a very nice technique. It's something that probably most of us have drunk any time of our life, okay? It's very common, it's very, it's very um, almost useful, I would like to say, because usually you prepare a lot and drink it over time, okay? It's not just a coffee that you prepare now and need to finish it now, okay? So to do that, we are going to take some coffee I have here inside my uh, glass canisters okay these are also made of chef glass canisters right now they are not in a little discount in a super big discount okay right now you can find them for less than 50% of the usual price okay so go now and get them it's a set of two remember one smaller and one bigger one and a bigger one each one comes with a lid that is made of one piece of beet wood, okay? Now, why is this important? It's important that it's made with beech wood and not with mm, bamboo. Well, because it means that it's not going to crack, okay? It's resistant and it won't crack. Remember, bamboo is very easy to crack, this one is not. And they also come with a little spoon, as you can see here, that has a measure for how many grams of coffee you can have. You can see approximately 12 grams, 10 grams, and 8 grams according to the numbers we have here. Because inside we also have 10, 8, 10, and 12. I don't know if you can see that there. Maybe a little bit difficult to see, but there is a measurement. So let's prepare some coffee. I'm going to open my grinder and let's see, I have 10 grams here. Let's go first with 10 grams. And number four, okay? So let's start grinding. I'm not doing any extra effort. This is very simple, very fast to use, okay? As you can see, I can do it in the same place too, okay? But I actually prefer to do it in the air for some reason. I think it's nicer. Oh, finish. Let's get 10 more grams. Okay, you see the space? We still have a space there. So we can get more coffee. And that's it. Now, with this 20 grams of coffee, we are going to prepare up to three, four cups, okay? Of course, some people like to use more or less depending on their taste. Just today, I'm going to just prepare one cup of what I want to do. But let's see how much coffee we can get with this good coffee. All right, all right. So here I have a cup. 
approximately 20 grams of coffee grounds as you can see this is a number four number four is what we are going to pour over or also known as filter coffee okay the pieces are not very small not very big they are very consistent in size that is thanks to a burr grinder okay now let's go with the pour over set if you have seen it before but here it is so how is this well this is a little set that is composed of two parts that you can get right now okay for $12.99 here on Amazon and you will see that the first part is this filter okay that this filter has double function as a dripper as a dripper and as a filter okay so you can put it on top of absolutely anything that is smaller than the base okay than the base okay so let's say you just want to prepare a cup for yourself you can put it on top of your own cup and prepare the coffee directly there you don't need to do it as in this case on the server okay so here we have the Greyhawk Chef very fine mesh okay you can see this mesh is going to of course allow the water to go to the sides but usually it will just fall down so we won't have any difference with preparing coffee with a paper filter or with this fine, fine mesh stainless steel filter. On the other side, we have the server. The server is made 100% of borosilicate glass. You can hear that noise, obviously. It's very, very light. It's super light. It's resistant and it has one special property that is, that is resistant to thermal shock. That means that we can put something very cold inside or very hot inside and nothing bad is going to happen to it. If you wanted to, if you were like into experimenting, you could actually put this on the stove and it won't break. Okay? You can literally boil water in this. I wouldn't recommend it because the handle is a little bit too close to the fire. We will totally be close to the fire. But it's something that you can actually do, for example, if you're out. If you are out in the woods and you just prepare some coffee, you can actually do that. All right, so here I have my server. Here I have my filter. What do I need? Well, I need water, of course. And for water, uh, in the case of preparing pour over coffee, we don't just use any kind of kettle, okay? Why? Well, because if we use any kind of kettle, we are going to realize that the water just flows through the coffee too fast with too much strength and that is not what we want. What we want actually is water that we can control its flow, if we can control speed. Okay. And for that we need a gooseneck kettle. What is a gooseneck kettle? Well, it's this. You can see it here. This is a gooseneck kettle. This is made 100% of stainless steel coated in Teflon, okay? That's the color you can see outside. It's not going to scratch, it's, not, it's going to be very resistant and super easy to clean, all right? So here we are. Now, we call this gooseneck kettle, for obvious reasons, <laughs> a very long spout that looks like a goose neck. And this is a particularity that if you just look at it a little bit, water will come out, okay? You don't need to go very, very strongly up and down for it to get any, any results. You are just going to put some water in and it's going to be enough. So, here I have water in my glass kettle. You can see this was right on the fire. This is also borosilicate glass. Um, of course, we could put this Cosmetic kettle on the fire but it's going to get too hot so we can just do it like this that's what i need there we are okay Fine. now here i have my water it's hot and here i have my lid that fits perfectly in place it won't open this is very important why because if when we are using it it opens which is a little bit of movement is completely unsafe so in this case that this one is strong it's very very good all right so now let's get to the beautiful part we have 
we, we have our set here, we have our coffee, let's just pour coffee in. Remember, some people like to first put water into the filter, that is usually because people are using um, paper filters that they want to clean and they want to get rid of the paper smell, the smell, flavor, that's not going to happen here, okay? We just put some coffee, let me show you how much we have, with this approximately 20 grams. We are not doing measurements today, okay, we can do that someday actually, why not? But it's not what we're doing today, this is how much coffee we have, and we are just going to go with the water. Now, for the water, there are many different techniques. Some techniques are going from the outside in, going from the inside out, just staying in one place, going in, a, in set motions, in zigzag motions. Others are just going in a spirals, okay? You can choose the one you like. And it's going, to, the best recommendation I can give you is just don't stay in one place, okay? They need some movement. So first what we are going to do is just mix the water with the coffee. For that is just, see how little movement I make and the water is coming out. Closer, so maybe you can see it better. Nope, okay. Uh, here they'll tell me no. <laughs> there we are. Almost no coffee came out, but all our coffee grounds here are wet. Okay, that is very important. We just got the first one of water in. Now, we are going to get a blue on the second turn. What is a blue? What is when the coffee goes out? Now, in this case, you can choose to either just put a little bit of coffee or put a lot in one go. A little bit more. stop it you can see the color of the coffee how dark and rich it is and you will even smell it okay you will see that it's amazing very very fast we don't let it dry just pour water again or at least is the way I'm doing it today you can see how little water is actually coming from the sides okay if I touch it yes but how little is actually coming out from the side usually it just goes down. That is very important because it means that the water is going to all the coffee and not just one part, okay? There's one extra technique that is just moving it around a little bit. This can you, in this case you can do it because the base is pretty nice and you can actually fit in many places. So you can just shake it a little bit, just to get a little bit more even. Now I'm just going to go with more and more water. are we repairing you may ask yourself well here you can see that we have measurement okay of one two I think there's three here and four cups on the top okay I'm preparing probably a little bit of three or a little bit over three cups now yesterday or today is it I think it is today it's cappuccino day okay so yeah we are over midnight yesterday's cappuccino day so why not prepare a little bit of cappuccino in a different way all right because of course we like to do things a little bit differently here so there we have our coffee almost no water coming out okay see take it almost no water and look at the color of that coffee super rich super super rich okay so what are we going to do now First, I'm going to separate my um, filter. I'm just going to put it on top of a cup and eat it on the side. And now, I'm going to froth some milk. Because, as I say, I would like to prepare some cappuccino. Now, what is the detail for that? Well, today we are not going to use milk. We are going to use heavy cream. 
okay it's a little bit different the flavor will be a little bit different of course but it's still going to be delicious now how are we going to do that I have some heavy cream here see okay and I'm going to put it in our fryer why not oh also for that I actually need to turn on my Here we are, here we have our milk floater. Uh, Devil Chef's milk floater is Teflon coated, stainless steel, okay? So this is super easy to clean, it's super light, and it's just amazing to use. Why? Because the spout has double the spout, so to say. So we have the first one that is the big one here, and then we have the little one on the end. This tiny spout is going to make us it's going to make it easier for us to prepare, for example, latte art, okay? Why? Because you are just going to be able to control it in a more easy and curated motion, okay? A very easy flow, it's very easy to control. Then we have here the handle. The handle has a shape perfect to fit your hand in, okay? It doesn't slip, it doesn't move, okay? You can actually hold into it and it one more one bridge anyway. Now let's get the cream in place. Not milk, we are doing heavy cream, but I'm saying milk. Okay, I'm not going to use too much, just a little bit, okay? There we are. My steamer is not ready yet. Maybe in one minute, less than one minute, I can hear it already. So let me check. Okay, so I'm to first take a cup. Here are my cups, here are my cups. The cups are also right now in a big big discount, 50% discount, okay? Set of two spiral cups. Here is one, the other one is there holding my coffee uh, <laughs> filter. Now, what are we going to do with this? We are going to first pour the coffee in it. As I said, we're doing cappuccino, but we are not doing espresso coffee. Why we cannot have cappuccino any other way, right? So I'm just going to first pour coffee. I will do it half and half. There, we have just half coffee. And now, I'm just going to talk, take my heavy cream and let's just keep it. Some steam heavy cream. What happened with the steam heavy cream? Well, there is not going to be a strong foam. For that, we can actually help make it all the way. So, oh, sorry, turn it off. So, okay, we are ready with this. What we are going to do is just pour it on top of the coffee, and you're going to see that it's going to mix way easy than if we just pour some heavy cream, white heavy cream, okay? Now, I would like to finish this with a little bit more. So for that, I'm going to actually prepare some white cream, okay? So I'm going to wash this. Remember, this is coated, this fruit is coated in uh, Teflon, which means that it's very easy to clean. You can see the cream there now. I'm going to clean it very fast with just some water. Actually pretty clean okay no it's not pretty clean it's clean okay and we just steam with it which means that usually should be a little bit dirtier but it's very very easy to clean now I'm going to get some cream all right just one second don't worry I'm still here okay I'm back so I got some cream here again some heavy cream and now we're going to fold it, fold it in a different way. We're just going to use a 
electric fryer and make some white cream. Now, because of the size of this milk frother, you're going to see that you can actually even put a blender in it, okay? Which is so useful for almost anything we can do, okay? Anyways, we're getting a beautiful foam. I don't know if you want to see it yourself. I think that's enough. Okay. So now to put it on top of our coffee, right? I'm going to take just a spoon. Just a small spoon, okay. Always keep a spoon with you, it's very useful. And just pour some of that on top. Again, we are making cappuccino, but with a little twist we are using heavy cream and steam heavy cream and white cream instead instead of just milk okay get that I don't know if you can see it or even smell it of course you cannot smell it I can smell it <laughs> but you can see it it just looks beautiful of course you can do it more beautifully you can add chocolate you can add some coffee on top actually we could do that we could do that we could add some very fine coffee on top let's make some a little bit of experiment let's just add a few grams of coffee and let's go with number one okay number one let's go back to our meal coffee grinder and let's open it okay I'm going to clean it. Now, this is just for people who like to believe out the limit, but. Look at that. You saw that? Isn't it pretty? I think it's amazing. You can see there how nice it looks. And we have our very own cappuccino you can see the different colors we have three colors here probably if we prepare it faster we'll have more but we have three colors we have some coffee on top that we can replace with chocolate of course but it has just an amazing cappuccino done okay i'm going to clean this a little bit and let's go with something else so let's leave this on the side because we have a lot of coffee but there are other kind of coffees that we can prepare with Bebok Chef filters. Uh, filters. Oh my God! Why am I talking about filters today? With Bebok Chef um, manual grinder. And what we're going to prepare today is French press coffee. Now, French press coffee needs requires a very coarse coffee. Okay, very coarse coffee grounds because the filters otherwise won't work. Now. So for that we are going to go with number five, okay? You can go with number four, five, or six even. We are going to go with number five. We are not going to risk a number six, okay? So I'm just going to, again, take coffee. Remember the amount of coffee that we usually need for um, French press tends to be more than what we need for pour over. That doesn't mean that we just need a lot of coffee, it just means that we need more, okay? Um, so I'm going to go with two full hopper, hoppers, okay? So let's go with the first one. Again, since we are preparing just a coarse result of coffee, a coarse round, what you're going to see is it's going to go super fast, okay? Don't worry, it's normal. When you are preparing coffee for uh, espresso or for aeropress, it will be pretty much the same. You are going to do it lower because it's just even if it's less coffee it's going to need way more energy to be grown so so small okay. let's get more there we are now you see how much coffee you have there one hopper full 
second hopper okay and let's go look always remember numbering the same size place sorry and don't touch too much on top of the ring because otherwise you always have the risk of doing this and it's not what we want okay until you get used to it you just avoid just going over the line. all right we are grinding here we are grinding i really like to go with this very fast but again you can just hold it on your hand i'm left handed so for me it's kind of a trick when i go like this i just go with my right hand but when i go in one place i go with my left hand it doesn't make sense but to me it makes sense okay let's see they can win this one too okay finish so much coffee so much coffee we got a full jar ladies and gentlemen here you can see it. so much coffee all right so this coffee is what we are going to use for our french press so where is our french press where it's right behind me of course oh. Oh. Hey, yo. get a hold of it here is our french press i'm going to need some extra water so first i'm going to away there it is thank you careful and here we have our uh, french press where is the deal with our french press well french press coffee is a different way it takes a little bit longer than many other kinds of coffee not because it actually takes longer to prepare but because the brew uh, needs a little bit more time for the coffee for the water to mix with the coffee okay so for that we have different ways of preparing this last time we did it right away today we are actually going to first warm up or french press you can do it if you want or not okay so just a little bit of water is what we need then we can cover it or not or you can just move it around some people like to move it around okay so the water gets everywhere but it's up to you. I honestly believe with just the steam will be enough. But it honestly should be should super super cold for us to actually see any difference. Okay? Otherwise these days that we have such a crazy water, maybe we won't actually feel that difference. Now, what's the deal with this French press? Oh, ooh, look at that fog. Love it. That's so crazy. Beautiful. Okay. What is the deal? This French uh, French press is made 100% of our silicate glass. So if I open it, okay, this in front, and I separate the parts, you are going to see that I end up with this. What is this? Well, it's 100% boro silicate glass. And if you look, you will see that actually the water seems suspended in the air. That is because there are two walls of glass okay so the first one is external and the second one is internal so even if I put my fingers inside and outside they will never seem to touch each other okay because there is actually air in between okay that air is going to allow us to just hold the French press and not get burned there is no risk of scalding because actually there is air in between the two pieces of coffee of glass it's actually just a single piece of glass but still the two wall of glass there is air in between that protects our hands that also protects the temperature inside the french press so even if we didn't do this process we just did of warming it up we will still see that our coffee stays warm for longer all right now let's go coffee in a lot of coffee we have there. Now, there are certain techniques that we can use for this, but there is something that we always should do, and is be careful where the coffee is. Because sometimes we just pour the coffee in and it's like this. Okay, you can see there is more on one side than on the other, and we want to avoid that. So for that, we just shake it a little bit, even, okay? Try to get it as even as possible that is going to make everything so much easier. Coffee in, now to pour up some water. We could use our gooseneck kettle here, but it's not needed, okay? Anyway, I first like to just wet the coffee a little bit before going full in, okay? So first, mm, I 
smells delicious. We just wet the coffee, let the coffee melt the water, all the flavors are going to mix together, the oils are going to just bloom very fast. Okay, that is what we want. Once we have this here for maybe 30 seconds, 40 seconds, we are going to add more water. Okay, so you can already see a rainbow inside. I shouldn't move it too much, but actually you can move it like this. And you are even going to see it start to bloom by itself. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. Probably a little bit, but it's already starting to bloom. And now we add all the water that we want. You can do it just with one place or move around. I just like to move around because I have to have it, but you can just stay in one place. How much coffee are we preparing? Three cups? Let's go with four. Four cups, okay? And now, we have this here. We can let it rest like this, but it doesn't make sense. So we're actually going to take the lid, the plunger up. Remember, always the plunger up. If the plunger is down, we are not doing this right. I was plunger up, lid close to the plunger, and there we go, okay? Mm, my foot, okay, there we are. Now, we close this, okay, and try not to press too much. If we press too much, we are going to just push the coffee grounds down, and that is going to make a terrible tasting coffee. So the idea is to just wait a little bit like this and after four minutes for some people, three minutes for others, we are going to push the plunger down, the plunger down and that is going to get us this resulting coffee that we want, okay? So before that we are going to just wait a little bit, okay? And while this is preparing itself, I'm sorry, have some trash in here, I'm going to show you where we're going to serve it. Today we are going to use our espresso shot glasses. Now, what's with this? Well, as all of our cups is in a very, very big discount. It's 50% discount right now. That means $9.99 you can get our shot glasses. What are shot glasses and why do we need them? Well, shot glasses like this, it's a set of four, are what we use for espresso, okay? Today we are not preparing espresso, but we can still have coffee in this. Because for many cultures, and for a lot of people too, a big cup of coffee, like the one we had before with our cappuccino here, is going to be just too much, okay? It's too much coffee. For other people, it's too little, for some it's too much. So we are going to just prepare this. That is something that actually you can have at home, okay? One evening, you just want a coffee. And you don't really need to get these big cups, you can just have a little bit after dinner and it's going to be enough, okay? So, we are ready with our French press here. I'm just going to push the plunger down. Uh, oh, we're going to first some assistance first. You can go all the way around fast, but it doesn't make sense. Analysis is way more enjoyable to go just slowly, okay? barely any pressure and I know a lot of people and it's a technique actually just to stop in the middle why well because some people are afraid that if the coffee usually the coffee grounds when we are preparing French bread they go up okay they tend to float so what happens is a lot of people are afraid that the water at the bottom hasn't been that much in contact with the coffee is available it's up to any person it's very difficult to test the water at the top and at the bottom and see how much concentration of coffee um, oils it has but if it were to be like that we can just wait to the middle and then keep going down there is a reality that is this true the coffee grounds will stay on the top okay let's keep going I don't know if you can see how deep is that coffee look at that Super, super deep in color. Okay, even we can, uh, we have a little bit of foam on the top. Okay, very fresh beans. It is going to make 
a whole mix of aromas, flavors, and everything in between. Okay. Now, let's go with this. Um, right now you cannot see it, but if you were to actually um, see, here it is. There you can see it. There is actually an extra strainer in this, and it's that one. Okay. I know a lot of people like to prepare their coffee with some extra flavors in. You could actually do that and use this little filter and just strain whatever is inside your French press. In this case, we don't have anything else, but it's a little extra measurement. Okay, so let's go. One shot. Let's make it to the brain. Yes, let's. One. Second one. There, perfect. Third one. Again, as espresso shots, these are actually quite big, so you're going to be to see that they're almost a double, which is great if you prefer it like that. So they're not actually that small, okay? There is some something going on there. But there we have it. We have some bubbles on the top. We have our French press that still has how many cups? Two cups. Okay, we have prepared four. So actually, we have two cups of coffee here. Um, that's it. That's actually what we can do with our French press. You can see the coffee is very deep. It's very nice in color. It's very strong. It smells at least. Now, what's with the flavor? The flavor, the strongest of your flavor, we are laid on how hot the water was at the moment of preparing the coffee, water that is not hot enough is not going to give good results, how fine or how coarse what were your grounds, okay? And also how long you let it brew. Remember, we let the coffee brew in the French press for up to five minutes. Over that, you will start to get a bitter, bitter, bitter coffee. That's not what we want, we don't want bitter coffee. We prefer to have it just strong. Uh, sorry, we don't want acidic coffee. Bitter, but not just that overly, almost overly cooked coffee. We don't want that, okay? This is just perfect. Four minutes is enough. A lot of people, what they do, and it's something that we can actually do, is just take the coffee out of the server that is the French press into another server, okay? We can try to do that next time. But for now, this is all today, and I see you next time. Remember, in one, two weeks today, yes, two weeks today, so we have Black Friday, we will have many, many, many discounts ready for you, and any of the products that you have seen today in this video, you can find them right now in your Amazon site, that's probably where you're watching this, so I hope to see you next time, bye-bye.